Um, hello everyone. Okay, I hope you're all doing well. All right. So the next program in chapter five is prime number list. All right. So this exercise assumes that assumes that you have already written the is prime function in programming exercise seventeen. I write another program that displays all of the prime numbers from one to hundred. The program should have a loop that calls it the is prime function. Now, I don't know if you remember, but then in the pr in the previous program, which is seventeen, we went ahead to create sorry I forgot to type this here let me just do that quickly okay yeah so we created a program um, which which had a function uh, we basically we created that function too and that function was the is prime function and that function basically accepted a number as an argument and then it returned true if that that number was a prime number and false if the number was, wasn't a prime number so this program wants us to use that function to basically create a loop and then display the uh, prime numbers from 1 to 100 now it's it's funny because well actually let's first let's first go ahead and then go make a copy of that um, function if you wanted to know if you wanted more in uh, basically in-depth ex explanation as uh, an explanation of how we created a function. Watch the um, the um, 5.17 uh, video, and it will explain more about it. it or basically, I talk more about it. But then over here, I'm I'm I'm, I'm also going to go through it, you know, very quickly. But then it wouldn't be in detail. Uh, so let's just go ahead and make a copy of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and open. Oops, that's different. I'm going to go ahead and open the program, the previous program, which is prime numbers. And here is the function, define as prime. So I'm just going to copy just the function itself, not the main program, just the function. So I've copied it, I'll close this, and I'll paste it here. Okay. All right, so this function was returning true if the number we passed to it. Um, is a prime number and then false if the number we pass to it is a it's not a prime number so th this is basically the code in the function um, we are basically keeping track of the of even divisions of, of even divisions um, because because if for, for a prime number if you know if you start dividing that number okay by one by two by three all the way to the number itself you should get two even divisions if you get two even divisions, it proves that that number is a prime number. If you get more than two even divisions, that number is not the prime number. So that's what we're doing. We're keeping track of the even divisions. We are first, first of all taking that number. We are dividing them, that number, starting from one all the way to that, that all the way to the number itself. So I mean, I mean, if the, if the user typed in, let's say five, we are dividing five by one, five by two, five by three, five by four, and all the way to five by five, all the way to the number itself. So we are dividing f uh, that number by one all the way to the number itself. And we are keeping track of the number of even divisions. And if we get to exactly two even divisions, we are. Um, if we get exactly two even divisions, we are returning true. And if we get uh, more than two even divisions, we are returning false. Because for a prime number, you should have only two even divisions. Again, we created this function in the previous program, five point seventeen. So, t so take a look at it, and you will understand every everything about how, you know basically how we created this function. But in this program, we, we are just using the function we created in, in the previous program to create the first, or basically display the first, or basically um, prime numbers from 1 to 100. It's funny because when I was testing the previous program, I, I mentioned that because we now have this function, we can display uh, prime numbers from 1 to, let's say, 1,000, the first 1,000 prime numbers. And uh, not, knowing that this, the, not knowing that the next program actually was something similar, except we are creating the first... 100 prime numbers okay so we have the function ready so all we have to go ahead is uh, also, all we have to go ahead and do is create the program right so i'm going to define a main function and the main function is basically a function the function in most programming languages is, is the function that is called when your program starts it's the first function that's called when your program starts and it's a function that basically has your program the function that calls every other program oh sorry is a function that calls every other function okay so that's where we're going to basically write our program. Okay, and the main, main function is basic, basically, we're going to call all our functions in this function. All right, so it's, it's good practice. That's, in most programming languages, the main function is basically 
what is called first and when you start running your program so we should do that let's define a main method and then call that function and that's going to have our program it's going to call all um, call other functions as well all right so in this main main method the question over here says that write another program that displays all okay so it says the program should have a loop that calls the is prime function so it says you should have a loop right so so since it's going to display prime numbers from 1 to 100 okay i mean basically prime numbers in the range of 1 to 100 okay so it, it's not necessarily the first 100 prime numbers right? it's not necessarily the first 100 prime numbers it's it's um is a, it's prime numbers in the range of 1 to 100 okay and i also mentioned i think i also mentioned the first thousand prime numbers um actually, yeah, actually i because uh, in the previous program in the previous program we were referring to a list of the first thousand thousand prime numbers i said that we can create the first thousand prime numbers so i meant that but for this one it's actually allowing us to for this for this for this one we can use this program to display not the first 100 prime numbers, although we can, but the question is asking us to display prime numbers in the range of 1 to 100. Okay, so just to clarify that. All right, so let's first of all start creating a loop. Okay, let's create a loop that's going to iterate um, 100 times. Basically, I iterate from 1 to 100. Start a loop starting from 1 all the way to 100. In other words, a loop that's going to iterate 100 times, right? And we're going to keep track of the count. So basically, we are moving from 1 all the way to 100. So let's do that. I'm going to create a for loop, set a, set a target variable of, let's say, current number. A target variable, I'm going to call it current number. And so for current number in range, I'm going to go ahead and specify a range. We are starting from 1, OK, all the way to 100, right? But I'm, except I'm not going to type in 100, I'm going to type in 101. This range here is going to give me, so let me just use a comment to explain here. This range 1, comma 101 is going to give me a range from 1 to 100. If I, if I typed in 100, starting from 1 and ending at 100, I, I mean, although I, although I said ending at 100, this is going to give us a range from 1 to 99. The ending limit you type here is not included. So if you Type in a hundred over here. Hundred is not included, although it's the upper limit, but it's not included. It's going to it's going it's always one less than the upper limit. So if you if we really wanted this loop to start from one all the way to a hundred, we have to type in one or one, and that's going to give us a range from one to a hundred. Okay. So basically, what's going to happen is this loop is going to iterate a hundred times because. <clears throat> um, it's going to yes, it's going to be, well, we we already talked about that. It's going to iterate a hundred times, but then the first time the loop iterates, current number this this target variable current number, is going to hold one, and the loop is going to basically do what's in the you know the, its block basically whatever is in the loop is going to run, and the loop is going to iterate again, and current number is going to hold two, okay, and then the loop is going to iterate again, and current number is going to hold three all the way to hundred, okay. So current number is keeping track of that our our iterations for us. It's keeping track of what number we are on. Starting from 1 to 100, current number will hold 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 100 each time this loop iterate. Right? So we know we can use current number. We can print it out just to see um, what's in current number. So basically, let's go ahead and do that. Let's print out what's in current number. Each time the loop iterates, let's print out what's in current number. Remember, the first time the loop iterates, current number is going to hold 1. Second time, current number is going to hold 2, all the way to 100. Okay, so now this is just a loop iterating from 1 to 100, and current number is keeping track of those numbers from 1 to 100. Now let's just print out the content of current number just to see, you know, what's in there, right? So let's save this. First of all, let's just do that. Let's just print out what's in current number. We are not ch checking to see if it's a prime number or anything. Let's just print it out. So and desktop is where I save all the programs. And I'm going to create a new new folder. I'm going to call it prime number list. And then I create another an, a file called prime number list. Okay. So now let's. Well, first of all, nothing's going to happen because we have only defined the functions. We've only defined them here. Let me just put some space here. We've only defined functions, and we haven't. Nothing is going to happen on, on until we call the function. Okay, until we call any of the function. In this case, we have to call main because main is basically what's you know where our program is, right? But we haven't called it, so nothing is going to happen if we run it. Okay, nothing is going to happen. 
So let's go ahead and call the main function so that what's in the main function can run, right? So it's basically, it has a loop iterating from one to 100 and each time it's printing out the target variable current number because current number is keeping track of the numbers starting from one, two, three, all the way to 100. So let's run this and we can see that current number starts from one all the way to 100, okay? As a matter of, as a matter of fact, let's, let's just go ahead and do this. We know, we know that by default, the print function always ends with a new line character, or ends with a new line. So what happened was, the first time the loop I created, it printed one, but once it, print, once it was done printing what's in current number, which is one, any, any time the print function prints something, it, it, once it's done, it, it, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line here. Okay, that's how the print function works by default. It moves the position from, once it's done printing out something, it moves the position from where it's at the end of that line to the next line and waits. And then the loop I treated again and it printed out a second number, but, but, but because the print function always ends with a new line character, me, me, meaning it moves the position from where it's at over here to the next line, okay, and, and it waited. And the loop I treated, I treated a third time and it printed out three, and because the print function always ends with a new line character, it moves the position from where it's at to the next line here. Okay, that's why we are seeing it this way. Now, the print function by default ends with a new line character, but you can change that default behavior and say that you want to change that ending, you know, that end, ending um, character or ending value. Okay, by default, the ending value is a new line. After you've printed out something, move your, your, the position to the next line and then print out the next thing. And move the position to the next line and then print out the next thing. In, 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 the case of, in the case of this loop, that's how it's working. So we can go ahead and change that ending value from a new line character to a space or a comma or something. So I can, I can basically pass in another argument in, into the print function, and that argument is going to be the end value. The end value, I'm going to set it equal to, I'm changing it from a new, uh, from a new line character to a space and a comma, or basically a comma and a space. After you've printed out something, don't end it with a new line. Just print a comma and a space at the end of it. Okay, after you've done done printing out something, at the end of it, don't don't move it to, to the next line. Print out the comma and a space, and then and then display the next thing, and then print out the comma and a space and display the next thing. So now, if I run this, we can see that instead of displaying um, vertically, it's now dis displaying horizontally over here like that. You can see that. All right. Okay. Or we can just use a space, just so you know, we don't have that w that weird um, comma at the end like that. Okay. So now we can see it's just displaying numbers from one to a hundred, but not all all these numbers are prime numbers, right? So we need to check before we print it out. We need to check bef to see if it's a prime number before we print it out, and that's how what the is prime function is doing. It's taking a number and it's printing out true if the number is prime and printing out false if the number is not prime. So before we print it out, let's create an if statement and say that if is prime, okay? If is prime, and then let's pass in current number. And then let's indent this. So if is prime, we are passing in the current number. It's going to return true if that number is prime and false if that number is not prime. Now this whole, we know that there is prime function returns true or false, right? So if indeed that number is a prime number, then this whole statement, this whole uh, method call over here is going to return true. And if it returns true, then what's in the if block will run. This if block will, will run only if this whole condition here is true or return or you know results to true. In, in this case, its prime is going to re return true or false. If this whole uh, method call returns false, then this statement wouldn't run. It wouldn't print it out. So basically, as this loop is iterating, current number first of all it starts it starts off as one. It checks to see if one is a prime number. If it's, it's a prime number, if it's a prime number, this is going to return true. And if it's true, it's going to print it out. Then then current number goes to two, and it checks to see. Is, is to a prime number, if this whole thing returns true, then it's going to go ahead and print this out. Else it's not going to print out anything. This, this is only going to be printed out if the number is prime. Okay, we, we've already created a function that's, t that's testing that out, that out for us, right? 
So now let's run this again. And we can see that now it's only printing out prime numbers. Okay, we can, so we can see it's only printing out prime numbers from in, in the range of one to 100. Okay, so it tested it out first before printing. At first we were just printing it out. And by now it's checking to see if it's prime before it prints it out. If it's not a prime number, then there's no code to handle that. If this returns false, this it's not going to print it out. And that's exactly what we want. We've printed out the first prime numbers from the first, uh, basically not, I keep on saying that. The pr we printed out prime numbers in the range of one to 100. Okay, so we're done. Okay, we're done. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves as always, and I'll see you next time with the next program as always. All right then, bye-bye.